Hey guys, big deal here. Um, drove up here up to uh, southern Colorado. Uh, we're in the bed of what used to be Navajo Lake. Um, coming out here to explore, uh, see if we can find anything left of uh, the old ghost town of uh, Orobles, Colorado. Well, shoot, mister, don't you know that it's pronounced Arbolese? Shoot. So anyway, uh, we're down here. Let's, uh, let's take a look, see what we can find. So, uh, down here at the Piedra River, um, which flows uh, out of the mountains here, uh, down, uh, we're right by the, the confluence, is right where the town of, uh, town used to be. Now, I already flew the drone over this point, and I saw this bridge abutment sticking here over the river. Um, and I thought that this would have been the railroad bridge, but... We came in on the railroad grade, and this would have been a sharp turn. Um, we're up, you know, out of Windsurf Beach, which is way off in the distance out there. I don't know if you can see the outhouses, but that would be where the high water mark here would be. And even for the narrow gauge, looking at this now, this would be a really sharp turn. So, I thought, you know, it might not be the railroad bridge. The fact, if you look right here, you can see remnants of the ties still in the ground here. Now, this must have been the county highway bridge that went into the town. So, we're looking on the railroad grade right here. You can see a couple are still embedded in the ground here. Meanwhile, looks like these ones have completely rotted away. And you can still see the indentation from them. So, and looking right here, you have a tie plate that's been underwater for the most part since the 1960s. You can tell it's it's definitely been been under here for a while. All right, we're looking down the roadbed here. You see a bunch of river rock that was used as riprap. So, checking with the map. The railroad gray would have crossed the Piedra a little further downstream here. So, of course, the looking at the historic topo map of the area, even the bridge we just went by, while the abutment was there, the channel of the river was probably a little further to the east at the time. So, let's keep looking. So, it's at this point we're probably going to lose the railroad grade. So, uh, checking on current, current lake conditions, we're about 6,018 feet. Um, the benchmark for the town was uh, 
6,000 feet according to the USGS map. So we're still approximately 18 feet higher than that benchmark. But the question is where it was the benchmark that they were using. Because it looks like it was closer to river level. And the town was up on that little spit of land. So we're going to see what we can find out here. Um, we're going to go to the other side of the lake. Drive the old railroad grade in. But Piedra River Bridge would have been roughly straight in front of us right here. Um, probably just slightly off to the left. I got a center and frame there. So, um, I, I'm assuming it would have been removed. I can't imagine it being down there, but with it being still 18 feet under the water level, um, chances are we're not going to find anything this morning. So as we walk back to the car, this is looking up the uh, Piedra River. This would have been the main line of the uh, Denver and Rio Grande San Juan Extension. So, so we're back down here at the uh, what would have been that road bridge. And we can see the new grade up on the hillside. Uh, if you look up there, you can see the water tank. That would have been moved from down here. Um, it's built out of a Denver and Rio Grande Westerns 484's tender. Um, I'm the number probably flashing below you right now. You can see the grade is that big fill. That's uh, the new line. So the new line was built by the government when this lake filled and is actually fairly level. Um, compared to the rest of the railroad uh, between Alamosa and Silverton, this was a super railroad. Um, straight lines for the most part, level. Only serial service for a few years before it was torn up. So. Looking up the grade here. Towards the horseshoe that would carry you out of the valley. There's that bridge abutment. So I went up the valley, there are a couple miles. I would have made a horseshoe across the Piedra. And if you look carefully across the valley, you can see today's road. All the way over there. That's the same as the grade coming from the water tank. So give you an idea of this fairly level area. Alright, so we're uh, a little further up the valley here. This would have been the horseshoe that would have taken the uh, railroad grade out of the valley. So you can see it's built up on a fill here. A lot of, a lot of cobblestone, a lot of river rock. So this would have been the subgrade for the railroad. So you can see it's starting its long curve here as we get further curves further and further around you can see the road follows the road bed up here and right off to the edge of the fill here we got a uh, chunk of coal been underwater all these years and it's, it's back back up So we're looking down here at the grade here. Notice it's uh, it's actually composed of a bunch of river rock. Um, for those of you who uh, deal with railroads, uh, you realize river rock is not a great thing to hold the ties in place. Um, but when this railroad was built, this would have been the best they would have had. Um, they would have this place is littered with river rock. Um, you would have built up the grade here to get just above the terrain and keep it on a constant grade above the uh, above the ground but they would have used dirt cinders ashes anything 
they could get their hands on that wasn't river rock to uh, lock the track in place on top of this. So, all right, so we're uh, here a little further upstream on the Piedra. We're looking at the roadbed that the U.S. government built in the 1960s to uh, avoid the lake. So this would have been the horseshoe that would have brought you over the Piedra River. So we're looking back towards Durango here. The water tank. Way out of sight off to the left. Downstream a couple miles. So the government built a brand new bridge over the Piedra. So we're right now we're walking on the uh, the fill that leads to the bridge. See it's a fairly substantial fill. Um, it's nothing you wouldn't see normally on the narrow gauge, but it is fairly substantial. So let's take a look at the bridge, which is just up ahead and still remains. All right, we're looking at one of the the edge of the abutment here for the Piedra River Bridge, and see there's a place marker here, placed by the Bureau of Reclamation, showing the elevation. Um, so just get this idea of where we're at. But, let's pan out here, we can see, this is the bridge that was built for the line relocation in the 1960s. Um, granted, it didn't look like this when it was built, obviously. Um, there would have been a railroad track <laughs> standing right where we're at now. But, it's, uh, it's now open for uh, pedestrian use. Uh, Navajo State Park in Colorado has it open as a uh, wildlife viewing area. But this gives you a good idea of what the bottom of Navajo Lake looked like before the Colorado River Storage Project, CSRP, which built, was the project that was the impetus for building Navajo Lake. So this could give you an idea of what some of the area down near the original railroad crossing look like. Alright, we're on the eastern approach to the Piedra River Bridge and you can see this trail wandering through here. Um, once the bridge, there's a straightaway for about 300 feet. Then the uh, railroad grade begins to curve back towards the San Juan River. So, And here's the Piedra River Bridge from the side. Taking a look at a uh, it's construction. It's a pretty well built for a yeah, standard gauge railroad. Um, it's kind of hard to think about the little cars of the uh, Durango and Silverton, the Cumbres and Toltec riding over this thing, but it's uh, it happened. So it's well built. Definitely overkill for its current use. above the town. This was the only real foundation I was able to find that day. Um, this is just below Arbalese Point. Um, would normally be under a few feet of water. But this is what I believe to be a foundation of the church. Um, I'm 
going off of this based on the fact that it's a very narrow building but also very long um, it just has the feel of an old school church uh, you have at the back of the building you have a cutout which is a rectangular cutout seen here um, I feel like that would have been the site of an altar or something so this was the only real foundation I found that day all right guys uh, we're down the middle of uh, a Robles Arbeles. Um <laughs> there's nothing um, <laughs> Uh, as far as I can tell, I'm standing right on the site where the tracks of the Denver Rio Grande Western would have came out of the Piedra watershed, and they would have went up the San Juan right behind me here. And there's just nothing. So, looking here, uh, I should be looking at where the Piedra River Bridge is. Um, but there's it's completely there's a couple there's a bush sticking out there's rocks other than that there's absolutely no sign here at river level of anything railroad ever having existed same thing with looking up the san juan watershed there's Everything here is just buried in silt at this point. Um, a little further up, obviously, that church, but you know, down here in the, the bottom of the slack water of the lake, this is this is where all the sediment has uh, deposited. So, um, go do a little more exploring, but as far as I can tell, according to the best USGS map I have of the area before it's flooded, this. This should be looking up the San Juan on top of the railroad bed towards Chama. So. see what we can find here. Um, maybe there's a little more uh, chance we find something because historically the river went that way. Now it comes up against the bluff here. So we're going to have to take a walk this way. We're going to see what we can find. It's a little bit upstream of uh, where the water tank would have been. Alright, uh, you have this oxbow cut into the uh, bank here. Um, Everything here is silt. That's about 10 feet of silt right above the river level. That doesn't even count with how far the river's cut down into it. Um, can't find any evidence of the roadbed or anything like that in this area. Just, again, so much silt. Um, <laughs> this, this is neat to explore, but uh, this, this section was a bust. All right, so we didn't find anything. Um, railroad related down in the uh, river bottom which is kind of a shame but I get it almost 60 years of sedimentation and uh, wasn't hoping to find much but we at least found one one building we found two cross ties a tie plate and a bridge abutment so, it was something, but better than nothing. So using one of the uh, first topo maps made after the lake, you can see, while it doesn't show the actual grade, it does show delineations in the topography. And if you read it right, we should be standing right on top of the grade as it changed see it on the map. Probably going to overlay it. Anyway, historically, this is where the railroad ran right here, although it's buried underneath a bunch of silt because according to that same topo map, right here 
should be the San Juan River. San Juan River is about a quarter mile over there. That's all the way against that bare bank over there. So the river is not in its historic location here due to all the silt. So we are standing on a few feet of silt. The railroad tracks are somewhere underneath us. All right, further up the San Juan, uh, the Ghost of Junction. So this is where the Picosa Springs Bridge connected with it. Now, as you can see, there's a railroad track here. Hasn't been a train on these rails since 1968. December of 1968, specifically when 473, now the Durango and Silverton, K28, pulled. The dead 481, a couple coaches, and a business car to Durango for the last time. So, these rails have remained silent now for 54 years. So, take a look here. They did leave one high side gone there on the house track back to bridge there, so you can see it's still sitting there. All that remains between Chowder and a real piece of railroad in between the two towns. Until a few years ago, pan back here, this was the water tank. It was still standing. And I believe I have a picture of it at home, still standing, albeit about ready to fall. As you can see, it has fallen. So. All right guys, we're gonna make one more stop here. Um, just east of Gato. Um, so, final spot, take a look behind me. You'll see there's the San Juan River Bridge. This is another remaining monument to the uh, Denver and Rio Grande Westerns uh, mark through the area. So, so all the uh, tracks were left at Gato. Uh, tracks do not remain anymore here at uh, the Juanita Bridge. You see. Roadbed is fairly intact though for a ways up the river. So Alright, uh I'm gonna go ahead and head back towards civilization now. Uh I'm gonna do a little backtracking, go back towards Gato, Pagosa Junction. And uh, we'll swing up back home through Pagosa Junction today. So, Pagosa Springs. So, like, thank you for joining me. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure to like, subscribe, um, click that little bell. That way, uh, you know, whenever I post another video, uh, you'll be the first one to know. So, thank you. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, it's been uh, it's been kind of a big deal.